Hello, Working Preachers. This is Caroline Lewis, and I'm excited to announce that we are kicking off our fall fundraising campaign this week, starting on Wednesday, November 1st. This November, we're celebrating Working Preacher as a community of thanksgiving, encouragement, interpretation, and imagination by encouraging you to make a gift in honor or memory of a preacher or faith leader who makes a difference in your life. I'll be making my gift in honor of my cloud of witnesses who have encouraged me in my preaching over the years. I've been thinking about my parents, my professors, and my peers. Without their support, I am not sure where I would be today. Will you join me in making a gift before November 30th to celebrate the encouragement you've received from someone on your faith journey? With your support, Countless congregations will be able to hear informed, creative, and transformative sermons. You can make your gift online today at workingpreacher.org. Thank you for your support and making this ministry possible. Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for November 5th, 2023. Uh, we're in 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, we're suggesting uh, verses 20 to 39, but you might want to add a few verses on to the beginning of that as well. Uh, this actually isn't that long after our last, uh, our last um, reading from, from last Sunday, where uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam uh, split the kingdom in two. Uh, that's in... 922 BCE approximately. Here we're about 50, 50 to 60 years later, uh, and we're in the Northern Kingdom. So remember that uh, uh, Jeroboam uh, uh, takes the Northern tribes, or they they are, are loyal to Jeroboam, uh, and the Southern tribe, that is primarily Judah, uh, is uh, loyal to the descendants of David, uh, Rehoboam and then his descendants. Uh, the Northern Kingdom it has a history of, of coups and uh, overthrowing of regimes. There's a lot of kind of instability uh, in the kingship in the Northern Kingdom, whereas the Southern Kingdom is always ruled by a, by a descendant of David. So there's one difference between them. Uh, in this story, we have King Ahab, who uh, by worldly standards is actually a fairly successful king in terms of, uh, of um, you know, being wealthy and uh, and being good uh, militarily, but he gets a really bad rap in the Bible because, uh, for good reason, he marries um, a Phoenician uh, woman, uh, uh, Jezebel, a uh, princess, who uh, leads him to worship Baal, uh, the god uh, that we know from the Canaanites uh, uh, and now the Phoenicians from the surrounding peoples of Israel. Uh, and so um, the Northern Kingdom falls into apostasy. Uh, cue the prophet, right? <laughs> Elijah comes on the scene. Uh, he kind of comes out of nowhere a couple chapters before uh, this, or actually just the chapter before this. Elijah the Tishbite uh, uh, predicts a drought uh, as punishment for Ahab and the Northern Kingdom. Uh, and after uh, the drought has gone on for a long time, uh, Elijah shows up, and here's uh, verse 17 of chapter 18. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, is it you, you troubler of Israel? I love that. <laughs> I love yeah, that verse, right? Goodness. That Goodness. says almost everything you need to know about the relationship between prophets and kings yes. uh, here in, in, in scripture, right? The 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 prophet is called to uh, to use maybe that well worn phrase to speak truth to power, and so uh, the prophet here Elijah um, uh, speaks the truth to Ahab and calls not just Ahab but all of Israel back to uh, worship uh, the God of Israel. Elijah answers, "I have not troubled Israel, but you have in your father's house, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord." And follow the Baals, right? So we've been talking about covenant. Here, the pro, here the king uh, has broken the covenant and led his people to break the covenant uh, with the God of Israel. And so Elijah, the prophet, calls them to come back uh, to the covenant to to stop breaking that covenant. And so Elijah sets up a contest between himself 
and hundreds of uh, 400 uh, prophets, I believe I'm right there, uh, of Baal uh, on Mount Carmel. And he calls to the people, uh, this is verse 21, how long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him, right? So here's the prophet calling the people and the king back to fidelity to the covenant uh, made all the way back at Sinai. Uh, uh I like to introduce this story. I mean, f- sorry, you introduced it. I, once you're in it, I like to say, all right, so this is a contest. Every advantage is given to the prophets of Baal. Right. It's their home territory, right? Yep. So this happens at Mount Carmel. That's that's their home stadium. So this is an away game. <laughs> for you know, it's like, for, it's like for in, my, in my life, it's like having to go to um, Lambeau Field. <laughs> It's not holy ground. <laughs> then the the animal is ba- Baal's animal, the bull, right? This is not a calf, which in the northern kingdom represented God. This is a bull, which is, we know from archaeology, this is Baal's animal. It is Baal's um, weapon. Ba- uh, Baal is the god of the thunderstorm, so calling down fire, that is lightning, and then rain. The whole issue is about can there be rain? This is supposed to be Baal because he's the god of the rain. Then there's 400 of them versus one little old Elijah. They get to go first. So every advantage and they get to go all day, right? And then Elijah starts talking (laughs) trash. Trash talk. (laughs) I've heard like the worst trash talkers ever, uh, like in the NBA were uh, like Larry Bird and Michael Jordan. Um, and Elijah's right there with him. He's talking trash to him. And the, the Bible cleans this up. Surely he's either meditating or wandered away or on a journey or perhaps asleep. Uh, and I think uh, one of my teachers said one of these means he's out in the outhouse or something. <laughs> um, then I like this. One little detail. Oh, by the way, le- the last time I preached this, uh, I had my son who was at the time, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, uh, dress up. We dressed him up as Baal from archaeology. And he had he had a shirt on that had a bull, a bull on it. And then he was carrying, uh, Baal is pictured in archaeology as carrying a lightning rod in one hand and a, and a hammer in the other, which is to beat on, it represents thunder, like a mallet for the drum. And I, I, my wife dressed him up. He was awesome. And he came in, you know, I am Baal, God of the thunderstorm, you know, uh, worship me. And, uh, and of course, the issue, though, of course, is doesn't matter how many prophets, you know, what the symbol, everything, if it's not really God. And the thing is, Baal is not God. Yeah. So, Only yours. And so it says at the time of the offering of oblation, the oblation offering is the loyalty offering. It's not, this is not a sin offering or a generosity or Thanksgiving. It's, this is the one you give to show you're loyal to. And so at the, that time, then Elijah took over. And- I love the, the, the note there uh, in that same verse, verse 29. Uh, so they, they raved, raved on, on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but, but there was no voice, no answer, no answer and no response. And right? no like, response. Nil, nothing. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Catherine, you have to add that after Ralph's setup. I mean, it's, it's home yeah. turf there, you know, and uh, they've, that, now they've been mocked. Right. And nothing, absolutely nothing. If you're a preacher, yeah. if you're a preacher who uses refrains, <laughs> that's your refrain, right? There's your refrain yeah. right there. Uh, yeah. Everything that happens, but there was no voice, but there was no answer but there was no response. Everything yeah. that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, so good. they did this, this time passed and still, <laughs> they started getting mocked and still. Um, but then but then th- there's this turn because Elijah, Elijah is now gonna, you know, if, if, if his term on the field um, and uh, the, the, um, the home team didn't score, 
Um, I actually am learning a, a little something about football, Rolf. I, I actually watched an entire football game and we won. So I didn't just watch it, my team won. So I really hope we win this weekend. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so so they get to take the field and uh, Elijah comes up. He repairs the altar because, well, they raved on so that it, everything was was destroyed. Um, and he takes what? Twelve stones. Mm -hmm. And that's significant. I mean, if, if there's any reminder of the covenant, it's the number of the tribes. And uh, remembering that this is a covenant made to by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob, mm -hmm. the 12 tribes of Jacob, of Israel. Um, and um, uh, when the stones, uh, he puts them on there, and then he makes a trench, and he puts the wood in order, he cuts the bull in pieces, he lays it on the wool, wood, and then he says, bring water. Let's bring water. So they're going to pour water on uh, on the burnt offering, on the wood. And then he says, do it again. And they do it a second time. And then he says, do it again. And they do it a third time. And at that time, he calls out, let it be God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Let me pause in there and say, in contrast to what we've experienced with the kings, in contrast to the fact that Ahab is supposed to be an Israelite king, but not being faithful where God is central. Uh, Elijah makes sure that as they are eavesdropping on his prayer, he is saying, let it be known that I am the servant of the creator God and that I have done these things at the bidding of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Answer me this so that the people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. This is not something we can do. This is not something we will do. But just like when God shows up, once again, we have the opportunity, if I dare say, to dance in all like David, or to say as the Israelites did to Moses, you talk to God and we will obey. Because what happens? Fire comes down, it's God's fire, and it consumes the wood and the water and the offering. And you want to talk about a score. They were in the last, can I say inning? I just messed up my my, my sports yes, metaphor. Didn't we're I? Just, you're on the wall. Last <laughs> half. Last They're half. in the last half. And the quarter. quarter uh, the last quarter. <laughs> They're at the very last second of the buzzer. And uh, before they have a chance to realize what's happening, God demonstrates that God and God alone is the only true God. And that's who they have to make a choice between serving or not. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, it reminds me really of, of back in Deuteronomy or Joshua, right? There's several Joshua, moments yeah. in the history of Israel where they're called to make a choice. And I know this isn't very Lutheran, right? <laughs> but but, you know, uh, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the God, you know, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Or uh, I set before you this day death and life. Choose life that you and your and your household might live, right? That there's a, there's a call to, you know, to, to, to make a choice here, right? If the, if, how long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it, I think as a Lutheran, I would say it's God's, uh, it, it's God who gives us the, uh, the, the grace to make that choice or the grace to follow where God leads. But there's a, there's a call here uh, to come back to faithfulness. Uh, maybe we could talk about it as a call to discipleship, right? Yeah. That they've strayed, they haven't been listening for God's uh, voice, they haven't been heeding God's call. And Elijah says, look, 
stop it. <laughs> you know, that this is this is the true God. Follow follow at, this God. Look at what He's if done. I, and if if I, and I'll say this, and then and I'll stop. Um, it's the same choice that Adam and Eve were given. Choose the tree of life or choose the tree that if you eat from it, you will surely die. We, God has always given us the opportunity to exercise that free will. Ralph, what were you gonna say? I was gonna t just briefly tie it back to the couple things uh, that uh, you said. You guys have said the last couple weeks. Um, last week, uh, you were talking about how Rehoboam does not exert servant leadership. Well, who does? Jesus. Yeah. And that's not Old Testament versus new, but it's human versus divine. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have the things that I want to, I want to notice the things that the prophets of Baal do in terms of how they go about worshiping their false God is they cut themselves, they harm themselves. You know, um, it says, you know, they, uh, they cut themselves with sword until blood gushed out over them. You know, uh, Elijah simply prays. Earlier yeah. it said there was no voice and then noticed no answer. And then Elijah's prayer is simply answer me, answer me, so that people will know that you are God. And I, there is, there is a call in this story for us to join the Israelites and saying, the Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. <laughs>